Hi everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we're talking about falling in love with or being in a relationship with another INFP as an INFP. So what is this kind of a relationship like and what can you get from dating another person of the same personality type? Can you advise towards such a relationship? Is this a good idea or should you run away as fast as possible? So this video will be aimed at more studying the relationship and giving you advice and tips to better connect with other INFPs and to have a more strong connection with another INFP. So if you have an INFP in your life, a brother or sister or somebody around you that you feel is the same type but you're struggling to get to know them better or you find it hard to connect then this video I hope will really help you with that. I believe that in many ways INFPs and INFPs truly get one another. Same type relationships come with a mutual sense of understanding that is insane. There is this feeling that I know you, I get you, I know how you work that comes rather early in the relationship. So early into getting to know this person it's easy to build that bond of uh, understanding or getting the other person, a feeling that this person is like me, I can easily put myself in this person's shoes, it's easy for me to understand this person, it's easy for me to uh, hear this person and to see what they are saying and to understand what they mean when they are talking to me. So there is something very scary in this, because when you talk to another INFP you can feel truly seen, truly understood, truly heard to a very deep level which makes hiding yourself or uh, keeping other people from seeing you very difficult so if you are insecure about yourself or if you struggle with your own image or with your own identity meeting another INFP can be a difficult and challenging position in fact I think a lot of time we feel tested by this kind of relationship we feel that this kind of a person is unable to, uh, is, we are unworthy of, we are undeserving of meeting such a person. So the main problem of this kind of a relationship is this feeling that I am unworthy of love or being loved. There is, and this feeling is stronger in this kind of relationship I think in, than in any other. There is this deeper feeling that I am unworthy of this person. So while an INFP knows exactly the right thing to say to, to care for you, while another INFP can understand how you want to be loved, while another INFP can make you feel loved, understood, seen, heard, empathized with, there can be this feeling that I'm not worthy of this, I'm not worthy of all this empathy, I'm not worthy of feeling seen or understood or of uh, being so loved or being so cared for or uh, being respected on such a fundamental level. I don't deserve to be accepted by this person or to be seen by this person. I think there can even be this kind of a doubt that this person must not get me, this person must have misunderstood me, this person must not be seeing the real me, this person must be uh, seeing a fake version of myself, I must have been insincere somehow, I must have like uh, put on some kind of fake idea of myself to this person, they must have given them the wrong idea. And uh, so these are the kind of hurdles that you find yourself having to overcome in this kind of relationship. Uh, making sure that you are really seen and really understood and uh, kind of uh, protecting yourself from being too loved, from being loved more than you feel you are worthy. So I believe that every person in the world has a natural need to prove themselves. So we all want to show other people around us what we are capable of. We want other people to see and to admire or to appreciate us for what we do. We want them to think, wow, that guy is cool or that person is awesome or that person has these natural abilities that I don't have. So to be around another INFP on that level can be kind of daunting because they have and they are good at things you are good at. So they are uh, kind of trumping you sometimes on things that you thought were your superpowers. They are good at this, so I don't have any worth here. They can do this, so I don't need to do it for them. They are capable of this, so uh, 
there is no point in me doing it. Maybe they are even more capable than me. Maybe they are even better than me. Maybe they are even more empathetic than me. Maybe they are even more understanding. Maybe they are even more ethical. Maybe they have even better ethics than me. And those kind of uh, insecurities can be really tough to handle. There can be this feeling that because this person is so good at this, I have no right to call myself this personality type. I cannot be the same personality type as this person because they are so much better at being this personality type than I am. And uh, uh, this kind of uh, imposter syndrome style uh, struggle can appear in a person. You know, the imposter syndrome, that's when you think that you are a fraud, when you think that you are unworthy, when you think that any kind of affection you get, any kind of admiration you get is unwarranted. And so I think this uh, uh, kind of a feeling is really strong in this kind of a relationship. But what are the plus sides then? What is the advantage if you can overcome this? What is it you can get from being together with another INFP? I believe that is uh, full, complete love in a way that you can fully understand and comprehend. Because let's be honest, a lot of people love you. <laughs> a lot of people really, really, really like you, really admire you, you really appreciate you. But a lot of time when they tell you, you can't understand it because they are not the same personality type as you. You can't get what they are saying or how, what, what they mean by it. So think of it as love languages, right? Some people, they prefer to give touch, physical touch, as a way of showing love. Some people tend to do acts of service. Some people tend to give words of affirmation. When another person gives us love in a way we are not used to, we do not often see it. We think it's not there at all. So this is a hurdle with dating any of the other 15 personality types. We can date the other 15 personality types and we can have great relationships with the other 15 personality types, but it takes a long time to recognize when you are being loved by a person of uh, opposite or a different personality type to your own. Because every time they try to care for you, every time they try to support you, it's like it's, you don't even see it, you don't even notice it. But when a 9FP shows love towards you, you will really see it, you will really know it. And you will really be taken aback by it at times because it can feel so intense and so direct. It's not just a little love, it's direct love just the way you want it and just to the degree you want. And at the same time it's so much uh, of it that you don't even know what to do with it. And... Uh, that you don't even think you can handle it, that you can carry all of it. So the INFP relationship can become, when unhealthy, it can lead to, you know, being almost overly dramatic. I think at times INFPs uh, will almost compete with love towards one another. So the feeling that you're being loved by the other person, it leads to this feeling that I need to be even more loving towards the other person. Because they are so loving, I need to be more loving. And because they, and, and that triggers the other person to become more loving and that triggers you to become more loving. So that can become lead to like a love self-destruction spiral. And it's crazy to think that more love can be a bad thing and that's not what I'm saying at all. Uh, I'm saying that competing about love can be a bad thing. So a competition can burn you out and the feeling that you are competing or pushing yourself or forcing yourself to do something can distort the real thing so it can make you feel like it's not even there at all so be careful not to be too extreme in your desire to sacrifice your own needs for the other person and to not burn yourself out trying to Put yourself on the stake for your own moral compass. So when you are, when you have a system of ethics and beliefs as an INFP that are very important to you, and when you care very deeply about something, and you're trying to do this for the other person, and you believe this moral compass can save the other person, can help the other person, can make the other person happier, uh, can show, can be a way of loving and caring for the other person then uh, you might become almost extreme to the degree which you think you have to defend and protect this moral compass. So it can be that you are 
uh, being unnecessarily rigid about your ethics and beliefs and unnecessarily uh, extreme and intense about your ethics and what you val what your values are because you think they are so sacred and because you think they are can cannot be compromised on and so you can be prepared to compromise your very health mental well-being and everything trying to live according to these values then it can be like if you are uh, dating a vegan partner and you are you self care about animal rights that can be that uh, you uh, take this to an extreme degree or if you have another value about relationships or about love or about uh, money or uh, capitalism or whatever it is uh, that you compromise practical needs and pragmatic s things that you have to do in the situation to survive and to stay afloat in order to prove a point or to prove your values or to prove how um, strong you are in your beliefs and how fierce you are about what you care about and this can become unhealthy for you and for the other person because it can put a stress on the other person seeing you do it seeing you spiral as you become more and more intense in your value systems and your ethics and seeing you burn out on your own ethics and your own beliefs as you try too far to prove yourself and that you are in it for the right things if you go deeper down it can also be other issues here and it can be being overly caring or affectionate uh, it can be smothering your partner with kind words um, it can be being overly admiring of another person like being too mindful of their identity and uh, being too wow you are amazing you are the best person in the world you are something special something else something unique something never heard of no person is like you you are like uh, my entire universe my entire world you know it can be like going in these trips of these beautiful words these uh, amazing uh, uh, realizations about the other person's identity that thing about them is so amazing that thing about them I like so much when they do that when they say that when you know all those things and it can be going down that trip a bit too far uh, thinking you have to go down that trip thinking you have to go even deeper thinking you have to be even more mindful thinking you have to stand up even more for their identity and uh, make them see themselves even more because there can be this feeling that they don't really see or notice this about themselves, and especially when you're dealing with 9FP. Wow, this person is amazing, but they don't get it. So I have to keep telling them they are until they get it. And, uh, you know, if you are an INFP and somebody starts giving you compliments, there can be a tendency to be like, ah, do they really mean that? How can they mean that? How can they be serious? That cannot be true. So there can be this feeling that, I, no, you're lying to me. You're being insincere. You're just saying this. You're not meaning this. And yeah, that's the challenge. And I think uh, in the part of this, it's also really over obsessing about your partner, spending way too much time thinking about your partner and thinking that you have to think about your partner so much, thinking that you have to make your whole world and every decision you make and every action you take about the other person, thinking that everything has to be about uh, connecting and building a relationship with them and their future and your future together when it doesn't you know uh, there can be times where you do things purely for yourself day-to-day uh, -day moments things that you go and do it just because you want to you know and that's completely fine having things hobbies interests that are just your own I think I say this also because I want you to be mindful that uh, your partner doesn't have to or shouldn't have to uh, go along with or be a part of every single plan or every single detail of your future and shouldn't have to fit with or want exactly the same things you do. And these things, they go to INTP so as well. You can become almost particular about expecting so much from your partner and uh, you shouldn't expect too much of your partner and you should give them space to have their own ideas and have their own I fantasies and uh, their own expectations and desires and uh, that's just a part of it you're dating an individual a person just as you are an individual a person and um, 
that's the challenge. How do two strong individuals, because the INFPs are strong individualists, how do they get along and how do they build a strong relationship? Can two lone wolves uh, build a healthy partnership together? Yeah, they can. Of course they can. It's just about how. And I think uh, when healthy, the INFP relationship can be an amazing act of rekindling self-love and learning to love and accept things about yourself. And here, my advice to you is let another person show affection towards you without becoming insecure that you are not worthy of kind words or sweetness. Remind yourself that you can feel that these things are wrong about you. When other people say nice things about you, you can feel that these things do not match up with how you see yourself. But what the other person sees in you might still be something true to them. So what you feel about yourself is what you feel about yourself. And what they say about you, what they say they feel about you, is true for them. So recognize things from that degree. This is true to myself, and that's what's true to the other person. Learn to separate and have that kind of sense of... The other person has their own identity, has their own values, has their own beliefs, just like I do. And here's uh, something important to an INFP, and that is overcoming that self-obsession that I am the only person to have values and a uniqueness and depth and intensity and empathy and the feeling that I am who I am, you know. I've overcome that. If you have that tendency as an INFP, overcome that and recognize that there are other people out there that also have this. I would also say, let another person care for you and to come to love you without worrying that you are, that you have manipulated them or that you've been unsincere, that you've given them the wrong ideas. Because that doesn't have to be true at all. Their assumptions, their expectations, their ideals, their fantasies are fascinating parts of the fact that they are probably intuitives and that they have dreams and fantasies and identities and ideas that are their own just like you have fantasies and ideas and dreams that are yours and play along role play you know build that sense of wow that person wants this and has that and go along with it sometimes you know be okay with going along with and letting the other person lead sometimes and um, I think this is the kind of relationship that requires being able to let one person dance and let the other person be danced with. So it has to be knowing, waking up one day and deciding that today I will let the other person lead. Today I will let the other person love me. Today I will focus on letting the other person see in me and to let the other person take space. And tomorrow I want the other person to let me lead. And I want the other person to let me show them and care for them and support them. You know, that can be like the kind of interplay you have and naturally develop because long term into an INFP relationship, what you get is really this ability to change roles constantly during a day, to have a time where you are the one on stage, you are the one who shines, the one who does things, who is amazing and lovable and um, perfect. And sometimes the other person is. And being able to quickly switch between that and let the other person talk to their point and say what they are feeling, what they're going to and what their expectations are. And going along with that. And then after that, being the one that has ideas and comes with uh, plans and does all these things. Because I think um, in this part of a relationship, this kind of a role play is something really healthy. Another healthy step, I think, is just admitting to your insecurities when receiving love and when being loved and cared for. And letting the other person know uh, when you need a break and when you need things to slow down and when you need a moment. And that can be just natural. I can struggle with hearing these things about myself sometimes because I uh, find it hard to believe in it. And uh, it can be saying something like... Uh, uh, that I don't know if I can uh, meet up all your fantasies and expectations and it feels very hard for me to feel, wow, can I really be that kind of person to you? And it can uh, be just those things that just remind the other person that, hey, okay, this person is a person with insecurities and worries and doubts, just like me. And that can also 
help reduce the pressure and build a kind of love foundation which is uh, really reassuring and peaceful because you are with somebody who is incredibly sensitive and gentle and somebody who is very understanding so allow them to understand you that's the primary rule of this relationship allow yourself to be understood and um, enjoy this wonderful pairing if you are in an INFP relationship right now or if you're an INFP let me know in the comments down below what you need and what's important to you now in love what are, what are your struggles with in love right now what is it you need in a partner what is it you are struggling with in a relationship and maybe you can inspire the next video thanks for watching and see you all in the next story.